Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Snapshot episode 53. I'm Brendan Patrick, joined always by Marvel Snap Phenom Cam Best. Cam, we are reigning in the new year. By the time this podcast goes up, it will be 20. Hold on. I'm sorry. I can't not do this. We're, we're wedding in the new year? Reigning. Isn't that a word they use? Ringing. We're ringing in the new year. <clears throat> All right. Welcome to the Snapshot episode 50. <laughs> 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 keep that in keep that in continue all right your week in marvel snap sir uh pretty enjoyable i honestly have crushed this season one of the things that i learned is that my win rate is significantly higher than like many other good players uh i, I had a 59.5 percent win rate this season and a relatively low cube rate considering it was a 59.5 percent win rate but it's one of those things where it's like if i just snapped a little bit better i could be even better than i am now but this is probably one of the best seasons i've had in terms of i had absolutely no down days there were no days where i ended after having started at a lower rank every single day i went up and that is awesome that was a, it was a, just a very, very fun thing to be far enough ahead of the metagame, good enough player that every time I played Marvel Snap, I went up. That's super, super sick. I'm very grateful for that. And it also highlights what I need to do to get better, which is be a better snapper. And in the literal sense of my snapping being good, I actually kicked around some ideas with uh, Lambie and Moyen where like they just show up on my show and we talk about whether or not we would snap here, why we would snap here, why we wouldn't snap here, really dive into the minutia of it. But I haven't actually fleshed those out beyond that. Maybe that'll be something you see in the new year. Happy New Year, by the way, Brendan. Mm. Uh, I actually have meeting asses. How was your week in Marvel Snap? I'm inverting the format of the new year. I was chilling, man. Honestly, uh, I've like I told you this morning, I had a I had a race to do some yeah, unprepared a, for a that ten mile race. Ten miles is no problem. It's six a.m. That was a problem. Shut up. It was six a.m. <laughs> it, it was it was six a.m. and freezing. So it was oh, that part God. was terrible to be honest. Um, the ten miles though, that's that, that's that's your daily breakfast. You know that you just you just knock that out. It's a uh, yeah. It's relative. You know, like the thing is is. I'm pretty shit at running, to be honest. The first thing I noticed. Oh, yeah. That's no. what everyone Bro, who runs you don't 10 know. miles Bro, says. Is like, I, I suck at running. There, there I, is yeah, levels. Yep. There is levels, man. I get passed up by. Every, no, I actually everybody. do understand. It's, I actually do understand because it's like people are like, oh, KM, you're strong. And it's like, not really. Yeah. Like, no, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, so, yeah, I've just been chilling, man. I haven't been playing too much, to be honest. Uh, I mostly am like a poop player at this point. I don't know if that's an archetype of player, but. Uh, whenever I have downtime or whenever I'm on the toilet is when I have Marvel stuff. I have, I have honestly like talk about uh, we, downtime. We've had this. We've had this conversation. Something's a lot. going down. Yeah. Okay, I th that wasn't worth making the joke, but I wanted to make it. <laughs> we've anyway. had this combo Continue. a lot though. That uh, pe like if you're not incentivized to grind for a position on leaderboard, and what 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 does incentivization mean? Right, you're personally incentivized. Yeah. The game incentivizes you. I would say for the most part, personally incentivized, which I don't really feel that at this point, um, especially in the context of. You know, playing other games, splitting my time there, and then also uh, life stuff. But with the current ladder system and with the current reward system, mm -hmm. at post infinite, I don't really feel a desire or need to grind the game per se, or like really put in uh, put in more reps than I feel like I need to to fully understand. Like, I guess, uh, can I ask you a question mm -hmm. then? Yep. What would I have to do to get you to do that? Uh, there'd have to be tournaments. Honestly, one of my best experiences. Is that really it? Like you couldn't, you couldn't just enjoy playing ladder and climbing higher and like showing, uh, getting your name in there and all that stuff. I'm doing just, a feature on my YouTube channel. You just not built like that. Anymore? Uh, I don't think so. Cause like, I just, I have this, uh, thing with like new games. Uh, I love new games. Okay. <laughs> I'm constantly like popping between, uh, things, whether it's games or just other, uh, activities, hobbies, what, sure. Let's see. But I will say I played tournaments in all kinds of games. Marvel Snap, probably the best experience. I mean, it doesn't, it, it's not as good as like when, I guess when you fly across the world, you see your friends in like weird, another country and there's hundreds of people there. Like there's an atmosphere to a pro tour to the world championship. But in terms of competitive, just essence, Marvel Snap is such a good competitive game. And it is, it has been criminally underrepresented like this sure. game is so freaking good at the highest level because there is so much depth that goes in uh to the into the gameplay but also the deck building the mind games like it's it's one of those games Yo, can we go ahead can i hijack this because you mentioned deck building mm -hmm. right 
And there's been like an ongoing drama about deck accreditation. That's crazy. Recently. I actually saw that. that at, by dude, the way, I just got to say is, that I saw that on Twitter. I, I don't. Twitter is literally deleted sure. off my phone. I loaded it up on the web browser to check something very specific. And at 6 a.m. this morning, well, it was like it was like 5.50, <laughs> right? I was I was using the restroom before I was about to do this run, and I saw that post exactly. That was I don't even know what post you're talking about, because I believe the post you're talking about is from someone who I have muted. But I, I will think, say mm, that I have... I, it was from Alex. Alex? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It was addressing someone I have muted. But I will say I have some thoughts on deck accreditation that i'm just going to run through real quick mm -hmm. uh the first one is i think it sucks when people act like giving someone credit for an idea is like this laughable thing like one of the takes i've seen a lot is like lull 12 card decks imagine thinking about that and it's like well no like in this case we're talking about a sarah deck sarah has very rarely been good making sarah good at the highest level of play is actually an accomplishment the deck absolutely is abusing cards that are very recent miss marvel gladiator maximus it is a very very powerful shell of very very recently changed cards recently introduced recently Recently buffed cards if this was something that was so obvious to everyone why was only one person on it in the first place right so like that's that's number one which is like people are like lull 12 cards i think that is sort of missing the point mm -hmm. and i think additionally it misses the point because there are a lot of people who and i i don't want to make it sound like i'm taking credit for their successes i i, I definitely think these are people who would have succeeded without my help but there are so many people who I have put people onto because that is valuable. And I'm just going to name off some names here. And these are all people who have been featured on my channel. And I think if you ask them, they would say it was helpful to them. Lambie series, Yo Woody, W, AKA Wowolos, uh, Husky Puppies, Hella Enjoyer. Like these are just a couple of names. Equinox. I've got more. Like the idea that debt credit doesn't matter because like fundamentally it is stupid right it is stupid to care about who came up with a 12 card deck first i get it there's a finite amount of combinations of cards it is stupid and if you had no idea where the deck came from you just saw it on untapped i think that is 100 fine but i think the people making fun of the very concept of it like there are smaller creators who would not be where they are if it weren't for that kind of stuff. And there are bigger creators who would not be who they are. Like Lambie. I think Lambie would have succeeded anyway, but getting credit for the stuff he did helped make him a name yeah. and helped get him invited to Creator Clash yeah. and helped get him invited to Conquerors. Those are the tournaments that gave him the opportunity to win things, right? Mm -hmm. The, and the Thanos master, right? That was his, uh, that was like his, right. his That's what he was. That was his brand. And that was able to happen because people credited him correctly for what he was doing to push an archetype forward. And that does matter. I will say, I also am very annoyed at all the people who show up in someone's mentions on Twitter and they're like, actually, isn't the so-and-so's deck? Don't ever do that. It sucks. Please don't do that, right? <laughs> like, it's very annoying. You have no idea if there was any actual malice on that person's part. And when 25 people are all saying the same thing to you, it's very easy to just look at them and be like, all right, can you please just leave me alone? It's not an effective way of communicating what you're trying to communicate. Mm. Yeah, but, it's uh, it's funny too, because I don't know. This this oh, obviously, obviously this transcends all games like all card games but I guess Marvel Snap there's a lot of deck lists going around but um, there's a, like in Flesh and Blood I'm probably the biggest if not one of the biggest creators definitely the biggest pocket so let me say it arrogantly but I say that because I want to put some uh, frame of reference which is I in any any situation possible I would love to give deck credit I would I would love it. I would love it it would be there is it takes absolutely nothing away from my brand zero but I can't have information that I don't know exists. And yes, <laughs> it's like, um, in absolutely. I want, here's my take on debt credit. And you tell me if I'm a piece of shit or not. My take sure. on debt credit, or at least my, my Pareto, my 80, 20 is that I will give you the name of who I got it from. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Like, and it's like, if it goes, I, I, if it goes a like, hundred levels deeper, I'm sorry. Like, sure. I just, I, yeah. Like if I, you're, if you got it from somebody and you say, that's where I got it from, that's fine. And this is sort of why I feel like this whole conversation has been insanely stupid, because 
Everyone is asking for more than they should ask for in the answer. And I know what a piece of shit I sound like right now. I know what like a typical internet dipshit I sound like. The answer is actually in the middle. You are not obligated to give debt credit, but try if you can. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely a bell curve, right? Both sides of the argument, like on the extremes, yeah. are just uh, yeah, probably wrong. <laughs> that's a, that's the problem. It's, it, it blows my mind. This whole thing is like designed in a lab to create a discourse that I'm I've, angry. I've about. never seen it brought up more and with as much fervor as in Marvel Snap and in other games. I feel like people are stealing. I don't know. Sometimes they're stealing. Yeah, like you said, they're stealing entire archetypes. I don't know. It's just it's something that I feel like a game usually matures out of. Actually, surprisingly, it's like very. It's more popular in the beginning, and then as the game gets older, um, I agree. Yeah, it, like it the, just the, seems the, to if this it like once archetypes are defined and once these things are set in stone, making a tweak on them and making it your own is not worth doing. But when, like for example, I have a deck in my tier list, right? Mm -hmm. I got it off of Untapped. But a high level player in my chat was like, actually, I know who made that deck originally. And so I was like, OK, I'll credit them. It was very easy to do. Right. And I think the basic thing is you're not obligated to do it, but you're also not obligated to like. Do a lot of things that we like to do. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I give debt credit to people because they deserve it and because to not do that would be to dishonestly convey that I created the thing that I didn't create. Yeah. I think, and that's pretty much it. I think people see the Lambie scenario. Um, and it's like, Lambie's like a unicorn scenario, right? Like he got this, uh, he got this title and he really rode the wave, whether he was the one riding it or people just took him on the, tr on the wave itself, mm -hmm. which is, I think it was the latter. Uh, and he really built a brand off of it. Like that's really, that's how Lambie's, but obviously he's a fantastic player as well. But, <laughs> That situation is definitely the exception, not the example. And when a deck doesn't get credited 100% correctly, you're not missing like the the Lambie stardom, right? It's like, I don't know. It's it's really important. I mean, I think I, there are just a ton of high level players that people just don't know about. Yeah, it's Yo, really Woody's one hella enjoyer, Husky puppies. But I think the number one insanely good player that people just don't know about because he doesn't play enough is Tanjo, mm. who is just an absolute murderer. Like one of the best players I have ever had the pleasure of facing off against someone who was so good. I thought he was sniping for a significant portion of time. He is an unbelievable player. Yeah. And like there are a lot of players like that at the top end of ladder, which is like this is an incredibly, incredibly talented player who will never get the shine they deserve unless I do stuff like yeah. this. But and they're also consistent, it. right? It's like, I don't know. I feel like... um yeah, I feel like if someone is consistent in their quality of deck building and their play, like they will rise to the top eventually and creators will recognize them um, and creators take it upon themselves to do that. Like, I mean, we had Molt on here one time and he liked the yeah. phrase, a rising tide lifts lifts all ships. I think a lot of creators it actually, does. I think more creators than people think, at least the cynical people, than people think uh, genuinely believe in that statement and try yeah, to- Yeah, like people- <sighs> People think that I think of these people as my competition. Yeah, I think it's dog eat dog. It's absolutely not. Like the only time we're actually in competition is if we are streaming at the same time. And frankly, I've already lost that one. Mm -hmm. I stream at the same time as Dara and Dexter. Like I, I know where I'm at on that totem pole. Like I like that's that's reality, right? Like these people are not competition. The more they grow the game, the better that is for me. Yeah. That's like the uh, it's like the full circle is that you start to realize that like it's actually the collective that has to better itself. Like and it comes up all together rather than people think it's way more competitive and doggy dog than it is. And it really isn't. And if yep. you have that mindset that it is this like hyper competitive, selfish um, kind of system, I think you're just wrong and ultimately it will probably lead to your failure. Anyway, Cam, there's something I want to ask you about specifically because you said you want to become a better snapper. What does it mean to be a better snapper? I'm not aggressive enough. Okay, what does aggressive snapping look like? Uh, I feel like that should be pretty straightforward. I tend to wait a little bit too long to make sure I'm not going to get blown out by some low percentage play mm -hmm. when I should, in fact, be ignoring that or at least saying it's low percentage and I'm good to go. Do you think you... Do you have a hard, harder time taking the losses when you do snap aggressively and you lose than later yes. when you get more information? Yeah, okay. So A the, distinct that, portion of it is because I am a streaming mm -hmm. and because I am managing my own tilt, which is in itself a leak in my mental okay, game, yeah. which must be addressed. 
yeah so yeah that is that is the inherent like one of the inherent fallacies is uh this like this like agency and information that you can get by doing something later Mm -hmm. but it actually doesn't exist because yeah it's what's a what's a parallel you can draw to but yeah i mean it just in marvel it's called being a bad poker player exactly in marvel snap you snap early because let's say you know, you have some, you draw your turn one, you draw your f- first few cards. You're like, this is, this is the best my deck can do. This is the best like hand my you, deck can when draw. When you lose, when you lose with pocket aces, it doesn't mean you were stupid to play the pocket aces, how you're supposed to play the pocket aces. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I'm bad at that. And something that we said, uh, I remember in regards to Thanos is like, <clears throat> like we were talking about some of the best opening hands with Thanos. And it's like, if your deck is not snapping this situation, this hand, it doesn't snap, period. Like, your deck should never snap then. It's like, you, your deck, it's not, you're, you're not making the choice to snap. Your deck simply snaps here. That's what it does. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, I'm, co- I'm keen to see the sort of development over 2024 for that. Because that has been, I mean, literally since the inception of this podcast, I think we were talking about, um, like, your sort of passive snapping and looking to be more aggressive. And yeah, absolutely. And from players like Lambie and stuff like that. So that's Absolutely. Awesome. Always will. All right, next up is the news. We had Celine release. Celine was a one minus one that said on reveal, afflict the lowest power card in each player's hand with minus three power. She sucks. How badly? Pretty badly. Uh, Like, not a good card. Don't recommend getting it. Yeah. What would you do to, like, is this in in any way... like meta contextual could this change in the future or do you think this card is fundamentally underpowered um make her like a one two (laughs) i don't know like she was the kind of card that before she was released i was thinking okay well i don't know if i'm gonna play this in an eyeless bounce but it's at least an argument and then after she was released i was like oh it's not an argument we don't play her at all and if she doesn't go there she doesn't go anywhere and so she doesn't go anywhere Mm. makes sense all right well let's head on to the bend and snap this is our listener question section if you want to get your question read out on next week's podcast you can shoot us a comment on youtube last week was our one year episode so we got a lot of feedback on that so we got a few to get through but we're gonna we're gonna get to our main topic which is january card predictions power level predictions all right first one is from aspire fgc they say i listen on apple pod i listen on apple podcast and went back to check the previous episodes yep started episode one congrats you guys appreciate the content so i'm gonna highlight this because that's impressive someone who started you know cam i didn't when we started this podcast i i don't remember realizing that it was literally on the start of the year of 2023 because that seems to be how it lined up was that? I don't think it was. It, it must have been a week. Right it must have been a week me. or two off or something like that. Like it, I don't know, but it is weird. I, it, I remember being in my living room talking to you about it for the first time, and that I don't think that's it didn't December. Feel like, didn't feel like December. Didn't feel like December. Yeah. I feel like like part of me is like, did we do this in the beta? Like I don't I don't remember. Uh, it was definitely global release um, a couple weeks after global release. But anyway, I just want to say shout out to Aspire. Shout out to anybody who's been listening since episode one. That's uh that's impressive, and we appreciate uh, your listenership. All right, here this one's from I Filled Banks to say <clears throat> the main thing that got me into Snap was Broad. Her son was so dope on release. Personally, as I got older, the longer games were, <clears throat> uh, the longer games where you both cre- create cards killed her son for me. But that initial base game was Chef's Kiss. Love the Wait, can you matches. reread that? I'm not sure I understand. Uh, so what personally, when I got older, the long games where you both create cards. So ah, yeah, her okay, son's I like, get it, yeah. I get it, I get it, I get it now. I was like, I was confused for a second there. Yeah, killed it for them, and they love the shorter matches. Uh, this is just an interesting comment because there's this concept of, um, you know, you don't really follow Blizzard, right? You don't follow the studio. You follow the people behind the products that you love. And Ben Broad was was sort of that the person behind Hearthstone, and that's why he created Second Dinner and created an awesome game called Marvel Snap. So. Yeah, I would say that I would not play this game if it weren't for Ben Broad and the people he brought over, because one of the things that I think Hearthstone got the most right was how it feels. Mm. And if you come to me and you're like, all right, we've got a game. It feels as good as Hearthstone. Every like all the sort of like audio visual things, everything feels right. Like when you play a card, it's cool. When you win a game, it's cool. All that stuff. And also. Every game only takes three minutes sold immediately but the 50 50 on it was it was 50 percent ben broad and 50 percent you know the quick games Mm -hmm. so yeah i totally understand that i wouldn't have played this game if they didn't have the uh introductory experience that they have um 
that sort of very friendly free to play introductory experience. I remember a lot of my friends. Uh, so when I was going to card tournaments uh, in paper tournaments, a lot of people were playing Marvel snap um, and I didn't have the fucking beta. So uh, back then I didn't know that I could get the beta uh, through other means. So I was just like, it kind of frustrated me to be honest. Cause I was like, Oh gosh, I, I kind of want to play this game. Everybody's playing this game and say it's so good, but like, it's just a beta and I don't have any friends that I can, you know, get a code from. And I didn't really look into it. If you look into it, apparently there's a way to do it. Um, but was there, yeah, apparently there was a way to like, I mean, Oh, I just got nepotismed. Yeah, no, I think you could blue stacks to a different region. Um, so it had like a uh, softer leases, same thing with Warcraft rumble. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that, that intro experience is what did it for me being able to actually be free to play experience the game and then get hooked and spend thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Here we are. All right. Next one is from air city. Ryan. They say, yo guys have been watching all year, giving, giving critical feedback and I'm continuously impressed with how much better the show has gotten from where it started. Uh, this was one of the most entertaining episodes so far referring to episode 52. Thanks for doing this guys. Just nice feedback from air city. Ryan here. Um, yeah, we have gotten some critical feedback. We actually do try to improve off of that. Uh, do we i don't i've never tried to improve in my life <laughs> yeah i i feel like i'm perfect and if you actually suggest to me that there is something to improve on you're the asshole we've actually we've actually gotten it's pretty funny because all of the i think i've talked about this concept before on the podcast but for some reason when you do any kind of content creation on youtube basically like all the toxicity is front loaded it comes in the beginning uh, people are just very very aggressive and frankly kind of just mean <laughs> uh Snapshot got past that pretty fast, but honestly, we got a lot of like early mean comments that were somewhat constructive, and we grew from that. Uh, to be honest, no, good for them. And we got some also, we got some pretty toxic ones, but <laughs> that's just how it goes. I don't know why it happens. People are so mean to like new YouTube channels. All right, next one is from John Donovan. They say, Ben and Snap question. Question: Would Brendan ever be interested in trying the upcoming? I guess this is for both of us. Ever interested in trying the upcoming Dragon Ball CCG? I'd love some of that content um, when it comes out. What, have you heard about That's that? That's not game? for both of us. It says, "Would Brendan be interested?" Answer the question. Well, I've never, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> I honestly, I haven't. Heard of it. <laughs> so the 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 IP the IP doesn't the IP doesn't immediately draw me in. Um, it's not an IP that I have like an affinity towards. And honestly, at this day and age, that's not really a big pull for me anyway. Um, it the game would have to announce an organized play structure that is robust and well organized and is over a million dollars probably for me to and that sounds so snobby but the only reason i say that is because most games if not all and all is a relative term are offering that right now and you have to choose where you're putting your attention if you wanted to play these these games competitively so if it comes out and it's a collectible card game which is a very you know if i'm not going to play competitively is basically a very very inefficient board game because the game pieces are very hard to get through booster packs it's expensive uh, we'll see. Maybe the gameplay is novel. I'll try it on some online emulator. But if they come out with an organized play structure and the game is good, absolutely. I'm open to anything. All right. Jameson Williams, Ben and Snap question for next week. Do you think Miss Marvel needs to be nerfed? And if so, how? Yes. And I don't care how, as long as it's significant. She was not previously the best stat stick in the game, but after the werewolf nerf, she is. And I think the fact that she's being played in these Loki decks is example enough for why she is a ridiculous card. It is time to take her down to size. And frankly, she remains the last massive power outlier in the game mm -hmm. in terms of this is an extremely undercosted beater. The analogy I like to use for cards like Miss Marvel is Tarmogoyf from Magic, which is just like a two giant, right? Two cost. It was really big. And Werewolf was that, Elsa was that, Miss Marvel is that, and frankly, there aren't that many outliers other than that. And once she's gone, I'm very interested to see what happens, because then the outliers start becoming things like, you know, Sentry and Isla, synergy type things, mm -hmm. bounce stuff, where you get power above rate, but you have to put effort in to get it. Yeah, which is much Things more like that are interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next one's from Brendan Gallagher. They say, as a former 40k player, you definitely, you're definitely not wrong about building an armory and the effort that goes into it and then needs, then needs or changes making it not good anymore. So basically nerfing it. That makes snap yep. nerfs way easier to deal with because building a new deck is not a big deal at all compared to building a 40k army. Something we brought up and I don't think we're both experienced to be like, hold on. That's like a dog shit comparison though. Building a new deck is not a big deal compared to building a new 40k army. Dude, I bet there are 
getting a new car is not a big deal compared to a new 40k army. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like I, just, I feel like that's like the world's lowest bar. That is so true. I, I just can you imagine the hours? Not, so not only is it, it's expensive, by the way. I don't know if anybody knows that, but it is expensive. And then you spend tens of hours, hundreds of hours building, painting, painting, it, getting it building, ready to go. Yeah, thousands of dollars deep in the hole. You know, destitute, and then they're like, boom. Deep in the hole, baby. Your A-tier army is now an F-tier army. Rough. What are you going to do? Who are you going to sell to? Who's going to buy that? Competitive 40k. If anybody else is a competitive uh, Warhammer player, let us know the, the cycle. <laughs> the cycle. All right. <laughs> Matt Met Mefford. Can you guys talk about um, grabbing upcoming spotlight caches and if you should double down on an archetype like Hercules or Grandmaster, or if you should diversify the cards uh, you get to help not getting smacked down no. by the nerf stick? The downside of only getting Grandmaster might mean you can't play the archetype at all. No, I can't talk about those spotlight caches because I don't know what's going to be in them. What, what do you want me to say? You want me to make some stuff up? Until the data mine, until the things actually come out, we've seen so many times how unreliable data mines are. Mm -hmm. And I can't sit here and be like, I would open this spotlight cache if I don't know what the hell is going to be in it. I do that kind of stuff on YouTube, but only when I know what's actually going to be in the damn caches, right? And I don't think they're going to change anything once the season actually gets announced. But until that video comes out, I'm just, I'm not about that life. Mm -hmm. And the way to go about it is, in my opinion... You buy decks, not cards, but you have to take into account is the key card to this deck likely to be nerfed in the near future. That's how you approach purchasing anything in any card game. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one here is from Thunder Keg. They say, KM, if you like hip hop, please tell me you like Run the Jewels. Uh, yes, I do. I've been to multiple Run the Jewels shows. It is my opinion that they've gotten worse over time as they've gotten not necessarily more popular, but more like aware of their own fan base. Uh, the best show I ever went to was a show they did with uh, when Run the Jewels 1 had just come out and they just performed the entire album. They had some pretty interesting guests as well. Shout out to Despot. He's never going to release an album. And he was saying at that event 10 years ago that the album was on its way. Um, that is probably... Like, I, I just don't think they ever got better. I think their first album was better. They've become more themselves, but their first album was this. This uh, it's better than the pre like every single Run the Jewels album gets worse. Run the Jewels one was better than Run the Jewels two. Run the Jewels two was better than Run the Jewels three. And I feel like they specifically jumped the shark at Meow the Jewels, where they took all of their uh beats and they replace them with cat meows it's like okay at this point you're just doing weird stuff to go viral i'm good and that's about not necessarily where i jumped off but like where my expectations cratered out they're never gonna make another ddfh which is one of the best songs they've ever made they're never gonna they're never gonna do that stuff again it's fine i i'll live there they've become uh not necessarily a parody of themselves but like uh, something for an audience that is not me. That's really what it is. Yeah, I've also seen them live, but it was at a festival. So, mm. yeah, one of many. All right, if you want to get your question read out on next week's podcast, you can shoot us a comment on YouTube. Appreciate everybody who left a comment on last week's episode. Um, it helps the algorithm so much. All right, on to the main topic. We've got our cards for January, starting off with Scar, which is the 611. says, cost two less for each of your cards that has 10 or more power. I don't know about this guy, which is to say, I feel like he's a Thanos lockjaw card, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's also just like, OK, so most of the time he's like a 411, which means I'm going to want to play like Shadow King in my Thanos lockjaw deck so I can have something to go in there with him. But maybe you just play like a 411 and then a stone in your lockjaw lane. And that's really, really awesome. And outside of that, I don't know where he goes. 411 is, I mean, the stats are how stats are good. Yeah, 411 is pretty... I mean, we've talked about 4, 411s, 2, 211s back in the day, 2, 12. Uh, how often do you think you're going to discount this twice? Rarely. Or you won't build decks expecting to. Mm -hmm. So something like a Lockjaw deck and you just happen to get a bit lucky. Interesting. Yeah. 
Uh, does this card excite you at all? Do you think it's unlocking any sort of archetype here? Is it I'll putting honest, power back I in wish, I wish this card and Kyra were swapped. I wish Kyra was the season pass card. She's cooler. But what can you do? Okay, well, on the Kyra, which is... Well, let's talk about power level. Mm. Um, I guess I'll go first. Yeah, I don't think it's going to break... I I, no. I can't see how it would break the metagame. It's just not that kind of card. Um, seems kind of like a mid-level card that will slot into already established archetypes at best and maybe have no impact past that. Not saying that it will have no impact, but if it doesn't do that, it will have no impact. You know what card completely makes this card eat shit? It is Mobius and Mobius. Yep. Yep. Yes, it does. All right. Kyra. Kyra is a 3 4 and says, ongoing, your one and six cost cards cannot be destroyed. I love this card. I, I want to play Zoo so bad. Like, I'm not saying Zoo is going to be actually good, but this is like, like I've almost lost to Zoo before, right? The, the, like, it's not going to be good, but it's going to be a super sick card for like new players to pick up and then be able to play a real deck. I, I, I think that's awesome. You buy this while you're in pool one and pool two, and then you just yes. play your Zoo deck with no kill you monger. Crush them, dude. Yeah. You light them up. I kind of. Uh... Maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like that's the best use case of this card because this card is at three four, which is pretty. It's yeah. also a Thanos lockjaw card. Yeah, you're right. Like you protect all your sixes, you protect all your ones, and it's like, well, what deck plays much sixes and ones? And uh, it's also an Evo card. High Evo plays the best one drops in the game: Sunspot, Nebula, Misty Knight, and it is a deck that already currently plays armor, just so it doesn't get killmongered. This is just better armor. This is the loot cage of armors for True. that deck. Yeah, and so, so it, it's an Evo card. It's a Thanos card. It's a Zoo card. I don't know what it does beyond that. Well, if that deck's willing to play a two three, I mean two three is probably better than three four, but three four covers the entire board. I actually wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about the Thanos application. The Thanos application is much much more compelling than the Zoo application. Um, I can see it fitting in Thanos. I just don't. How tight is the Thanos list potentially yes. too tight that if the Killmongers are not being played in the metagame, that this card is just so dead you can't play it. Costing three is an issue if you're going to be a Thanos deck, especially if you're going to be a Lockjaw Thanos deck, where it's like, okay, are we really getting anything out of this? I don't know. But she's, I think, the most exciting card in the entire month for me, just in terms of what she could do. And it's a, it's, it's a long time coming that there's a card that just says, hey, Shang-Chi, hey, Killmonger, F off. Hmm. Yeah, what is the what card did they update with the the like basically hex proof text or whatever? Hex proof industry. Uh Ebony Blade yeah, off Ebony of Black Blade. Knight. For some reason I was thinking like Mirror Muscle Shard, but yeah, Ebony Blade. It's interesting to see more of these more of these kind of cards. All right. Hercules. Hercules is a four six. It says the first time another card moves here each turn, move it to another location. I don't get it. Seems like ass to me. Yeah, it has to move there, and then I guess you. Yeah. The idea is you get the double move trigger, but at a four right. six. Right, like like I've seen. I see there's two uses for this. The first is big vulture, which okay. The second is uh, prevent vision from moving to your lane, which okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> like neither neither of these seem like a card that I would include in my deck. Yeah, Hercules. I don't see it. Um, I don't either. I'm hoping they change him. What do you think they would change? They would just adjust the uh, cost. <laughs> no idea. They can adjust the cost. I don't even know. Like I don't even know why Hercules is in Marvel. The only experience I have with Hercules in Marvel is the end of Thor four, where he had like a cameo that I'm assuming is never getting paid off. That's that's it. That's the only time I've ever seen him. Yeah, I assume you just. Uh, I mean, it's like what you do for any bat. Well. I, I hesitate to potentially say some words that will come back to bite me, but has, it's what you do for any bad cards. You adjust the cost and you adjust the power. Um, mm -hmm. So what values would make this good enough that it can be? No idea. Um, yeah. I have absolutely it no idea. It probably just has to I be overstated. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would help. I don't know if the text is crazy good. Anyway, last one is Meek. Is that how you pronounce it? Meek. Meek, but also I don't think he's the last one. Okay, yeah, I missed one. You'll have to, you'll have to, you'll have to read that one out for me if you have it on hand. But mm -hmm. so it's a one-one. It says, after each turn, if you discarded any cards, gain plus one power for each and move. Bad Morbius. That's that's my read on him. Bad Morbius. 
Uh, you not only missed one, you missed two, by the way. But yeah, Bad Morbius is sort of where my head is at on this guy. But Bad Morbius, like, hey, maybe that's good enough, right? Like, I don't think if it doesn't make discard good, that's fine. If it does make discard good, that's sick. But I don't particularly expect it to make waves anywhere outside of the discard deck. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, this seems like for sure this is a archetypical card with discard i i mean if there is a use case outside of this card it's going to escape me right now and it's going to be very very uh very very niche um could i mean do you think it's going to be played with morbius why not like there's an open there's plenty of open slots in that deck why would you not play like a potential one seven the issue is it really sucks if you draw it later but discard gets to just discard those cards and it's fine the fact that morbius is ongoing is an underrated piece of its power and I, I genuinely think it's a significant upside over this. Mm-hmm. Awesome. You got the next one? I've got the other two cards if you're ready, by the way. Shoot. The Grand Master. Two cost, zero power. On reveal, move one of your other on reveal cards here to the middle location. Its ability happens again. What do you think? I have to read this myself. It's a lot of text. So... To me, this seems like a Ravona negative kind of card. Use White Tiger twice. Maybe use Ironheart twice. Mr. Negative type things. That kind of already exists. And that's what this strikes me as. Uh, You could try it in Bounce, where it's like I get to reuse Beast, right? You, you like you beast and then you play all your cards again and then move the beast to the middle and the, he beasts them again. Things like that might happen. But I think Ravona stuff is is where my head is at with this guy. Mm. Move one of your other card on reveal cards to the middle location. It happens again. Mm hmm. Are you thinking, I mean, is it fitting immediately into a sh- like, do you see it immediately fitting into a shell that Mr. Negative Ravona? Yeah. 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 I do. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. I actually have the last one here now. So well, let's just, I don't know. I remember Grandmaster being mentioned specifically in the Bend and Snap. How do you feel about it power level wise? Where are you It's play? too contextual. Yeah. I have no idea. Sorry. There's just too much. It's going to be entirely dependent on what it's doubling. And it could very easily be a card that gets incredibly out of hand or a card that is incredibly balanced. Who knows? Okay, last one here is Beta Ray Bill. Uh, it's a 4 or 5. It says, Honor Veal, shuffle Stormbreaker into your deck. And Stormbreaker is a 0-1 that says, Honor Veal, double Beta, Real- Beta Ray Bill's power. Yeah. So, 4-10. Yep. It's uh, probably not going to be played outside of the curve of, like, Thor, Beta Ray Bill, Jane, Odin. Which, to be fair pretty fun curve it's a yeah. 420 and a 318 it's, it's some cool stuff for sure but uh outside of that i just i don't really see why you'd ever play that instead of just playing normal thor yeah well i mean i think that that <laughs> that's pretty much all you can really say say about that but this looks like this kind of looks like a timmy card can you see this there's no way this just fits into a normal deck right like you yeah, that's that's my instinct. There's no way this just fits into a normal deck. That is pretty much what I think. Hmm. So looking at January holistically, how do you feel about the cards being? Re- I feel like this is the this is the least. I, I think Kyra is really is cool, like you said, and I do uh, think that. Yeah, go ahead. I think that Kyra and the Grandmaster are pretty exciting, and that's roughly on par with previous months. Like, what are we talking about? We just had Havoc Celine back to back. True. Sebastian Shaw on the season pass. Come on, man. True. True. The patches and the OTAs, I think, made up for that. Um, like, we did see some nerfs. We did yeah, see maybe. some. We did see some nerfs. Maybe. We did see some. Nerfs. Loki's still around. I know he came back, but uh, I don't know. I, it, it felt relatively, I don't know, it felt fresh enough for me, to be honest. And I guess you're right. I, I was more excited about this month's, this month's cards prior to the month happening. Um, but January, January's interesting. I, I do agree with you, Kyra and Grandmaster are the ones that I have my eyes on. Mostly Kyra. You really sold me on Kyra and, and potentially in Thanos, to be honest. Yeah, I like her. I like the idea of her. Also might be terrible. 
might be terrible too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I like I, at the very least she's gonna let me cope with some zoo. Yeah, I think it's so funny that people are gonna be in pool three and buy Kyra and just absolutely stomp all the killmongers in pool three. <laughs> that that's so funny to me. All right, well that concludes the January card evaluation. We do these every month, and uh, so far we've been mm, kind of correct uh, most of the time. Sometime here and there. Kim, anything you want to end with before we head in 2024? Uh, thank you. I say it a lot. There have been a lot of holidays that have suggested that I need to be more grateful. You know, Thanksgiving, the December holiday season, Christmas, things like that. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much. I'm intensely grateful that I get to do things like this for a living in as much as I do. And I really appreciate everyone who's come along with me on that journey. Yeah. So last last week, obviously, we did our one year episode. You guys gave us a bunch of questions. We read them out uh, for 53, for episode 53, for starting a new year. I want you to let us know what you like. Dude, and what this you don't this like. is 53. That's what I'm saying. It's 453. I'm going to I want I'm going to ask you oh, okay. a question. Let us know what you like about the pod, what you don't like, what you would like to see more of in 2024, because I know the pod has actually changed direction quite a bit from from the start uh that could either be bad or good i think we've not as hardcore like level up stuff that we used to do like entire podcast but now we have a much more i don't know mature audience that's been with us for a while so we do have a longer question section so let us know if you like that if you like listening to listener questions if you like having your questions answered or if you would like to see more of the competitive side it Try to be specific when it comes to competitive as well, whether it's you know, <laughs> snapping decks. I mean, do you want to see more guests? I mean, we haven't done guests in a while. That was a big part of this podcast for quite a few for months. For sure. Yeah. So let us know what you like. And if, if you do want to see guests, let us know who as well. Let us know who. All right. Well, we appreciate all of you. If you like this podcast, the number one thing you can do is leave us a, leave us a review at ratethispodcast.com slash snapshot, or you can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, there's a video version of this at YouTube, at youtube.com slash at the underscore snapshot. Hit the subscribe bell there. Twitter is Brendan APG, Cam Best MS, and Cam is streaming in the evenings every day. Most uh, days? Most days. Most days. I stream most days. That's pretty much how it goes. That's what I do. I stream on the internet and I make YouTube videos every day. So you can probably find me at uh, Cam Best in a Snap on YouTube and uh, Cam Best MS on Twitch. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next year.